Hi there, this is Tammy. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I am on to do a tutorial for this box. This is a box I made for the Joy of Blue collab for May. This is using Graphic 45 products that I received from them. And I'm going to make this box using this beautiful butterflies paper that I um, will be showing in another video all the stuff that came with it. But this is where I'm getting my paper from. <clears throat> so let's get started. To make the box, here is my supplies. I have four pieces of chipboard. This is can be any thickness. These measure three and five eighths by three and five eighths, and I have already glued them together. They are this part of the lid um, that makes it the lid stay on. And they can be any thickness. I like to use four pieces. And like this one, I used four, but I think I used this black chipboard. Um, but this is, this is plenty thick. So you need chipboard for the underside of your lid. You need... And this black chipboard I purchased on Amazon. They call it medium weight. Um... I think they call it medium weight. It's 12 by 12. This is the only time I've ever purchased chipboard because all of my other chipboard I get uh, the packages um, from designer papers from Stampin' Up and I have tons of it and I have people that give it to me so I've never had to buy a regular chipboard. So you need a four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of the black for the top of the lid and then you need a four by four piece of cardstock. This is um, polished pink and a three and three quarter by three and three quarter piece of designer paper for the sides of the box you need four pieces that are four and a quarter by three and three quarter of the black chipboard and then you need four pieces of the polished pink that is it would be four by three and a half and then four pieces of designer paper for the inside that's three and three quarter by three and a quarter and I've already done I've already attached those um, and then you need eight pieces of your cardstock that is four by three and a half that's this piece right here. Please excuse the snoring. That's my husband taking a nap. Um, and for the outside, you need four. That's three and three quarter by three and a quarter. This is for the bottom. Three and a quarter by three and a quarter designer paper. Three and a half by three and a half cardstock. And then the bottom is black. Is three and three quarter by three and three quarter. With three and a half by three and a half cardstock and three and a quarter by three and a quarter designer paper. I've already attached that also. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll set this in a way that works for me. Let's see. So those are my those are those guys. That's all for the lid. This is for the outside. Okay, and the last thing that you need is to put the box all together. I have four pieces that are four and a half by one and a half, and then they are scored at three quarter, and I folded them in half and angled the corners on each one. <clears throat> and I have four pieces that are three and a three and three quarter by one and a half, also scored at three quarters and cut the same way. And these are how I'm going to put the boxes together. Um, if you've watched my tutorials before, you've seen me do this, but I was asked to do a tutorial on this particular box. So that's what I'm doing. So I've already added the cardstock and paper to the inside of the box. You can't put it on the outside of the box yet because these hinges are going to hold it all together. So what I'm going to do is... If you need to 
see what these were again. You can go back and pause to get the in, um, dimensions. <clears throat> I'm going to put these. This is how the box is held together. It goes like this. So I'm going to, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to put glue on here. And then I'm going to put this on here. I'm centering it. It should match top and bottom. And I'm pushing it down so that it lays on the chipboard. So hopefully you can see that. I'm going to put one on each side of this piece. My paper is di directional, so I need to be careful putting the box together to be sure that um, I don't put anything together upside down. I'm going to do the same thing to another piece. Boxes are fun and to make and quick and easy. Um, I usually size them based on an element I want to put on them. When I made this box, I sized the box based on this piece. So I went up from there so I had enough border of my paper. And this one I made the same size so then I had to find elements to fit it. So I've got that on there and then what I'm going to do is attach this inside here and I'm going to make sure that my paper goes the right way and that it lines up. I don't know the best way to do this for you to see it well. I want to be sure I line it up top and bottom and that it's up flush against this. And you can see that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with another piece. Again, I'm going to, now this is, the top one's going to be in the way. And I don't want to bend it up, so I'll show it to you in just a second. So now what I have is a U shape. Then I'm going to put glue on both of these flaps. I'm going to do this one at a time and put these on here. I'm using reptile glue. I use it for all of my box projects. I love the way it holds. So when you use liquid glue, you could make the same box using tear and tape or score tape. But I have had projects come apart that I've used those kinds of tape. And when you use liquid glue, it actually bonds the fibers together. And I've never had a project come apart where I use liquid glue. Same thing when I make albums. I don't use, there's only one place on an album that I'll use the tape. Everywhere else I use glue. So this is... This goes together really quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that my papers inside are all going the right way. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take these flaps that are for the bottom and I'm going to attach them to all four sides of the bottom box bottom. You can see you don't really have to overdo with the glue because it is I'm putting enough on there it's going to stick well. that anymore. So we've got 
Got this on all four sides. And then I'm going to put it on here. So I'm going to do... I can't remember how I did this. I did this box a while ago. And I'm going to do two at a time. I'm going to do two and then I'll go back and do the others one at a time. And see, I still... That's good. I left that in there. But it's going to be okay. I should have taken it off, but I didn't. It's going to be covered up, so it's okay. This is... I leave in all of my boo-boos because I'm not perfect. And I don't anybody expect anybody to think that I am. I make mistakes in almost every project. Those are glued down nicely. And then I'm going to put glue on here. And then on this one. There's my box, and I have, this is for the bottom, and I sponged the edges of all my designer paper. So this is going to be on the bottom, so it does not matter that I messed that up. It goes like this. And I don't know that it matters which way the bottom paper goes, but... I'm going to make it go the same direction as the inside paper. So it goes like this. And there's going to be feet on here. That are going to catch those corners. And now I'm going to put these pieces on the outside. Center that on there. When I'm doing a tutorial, I like to have as much done ahead of time as I can. That's why these were already glued together. I could not, and why these were already glued on the inside. Um, but you can't glue these pieces on the outside until you have the box put together. So. You have to watch me do that part, or you can fast forward, but it's not going to take very long. And I thought this paper had a right side up and a right side down, but it doesn't because these little rosebuds, it, it alternates up and down, so this paper can go either way. which is pretty cool. That's the last piece of this. So there's the base of the box. That all goes together very quickly. And then I'm going to do the lid.
first I'm going to put this on, my lid piece. And when you cut the chipboard, it does leave a little edge, kind of like when you're cutting paper. So <clears throat> I put that edge on the bottom. And then for these guys, I have a piece that is five and a half inch square, and it's the same paper I put on the inside. I think. It's the same. It looked a different color. So the first thing I'm going to do is put glue on here. This is the most complicated part of the box, I think. I kind of scooch it a little bit and that gets the glue to Sorry, that's my husband's phone. It means there's somebody else walking by our house or driving by our house. And I am going to use tape on this part. I forgot about that. This is the easiest way to do this. This is where I would use tape in an album also. And then it's going to be glued to the box, uh, the box lid. So even if this were to not hold, it wouldn't matter because it'll be under glue. And then I'm going to fold all these. And I like to use this to make. This tries, it helps for your paper not to, um, burnishing helps to make your paper not split, which this paper probably wouldn't anyway, it's not that thick, but and I'm going to cut, hopefully I didn't cut too much, this is thicker than when I'm making an album, so we'll see. So cut out my corners. And I will do one side at a time. And then these corners I'm going to tuck in. This is, gets a little tricky when you're dealing with a thick piece. It's much easier when you only have one piece of chipboard than when you have all of this. And I didn't measure, I didn't test this. Usually I test this before I stick it, before I put the paper on it, to be sure it's going to fit in the box. Hmm, see, it's a little snug that way. It's a little snug, so I'm going to push down on this. It helped to get it. I think it's still going to work. It'll fit down in there. So then I'm going to make this go the same way. Put glue on all of 
of this. Put it under there too. And then I'm going to stand up so I can center, make sure this is centered on here. Cover up my glue bottle. Let me press on here. Make sure it all sticks well. And the nice thing about this glue is it dries clear. You can see it oozing out there, but it dries clear. And then for the top of the lid, I die cut this out of one of the papers using my circle dies and then my scallop circle dies. And I'm going to put this handle on there using these brads. Okay, so this is a foam mat already. So I'm going to decide where I want this. I'm hoping it's centered. Centered to me. Am I in the view? Yes, okay. I'm going to take this the hole right there and right there. These handles come with little screws, and you can screw them into this too, but I find that the brads are easier to use when I remember to do it this way. You have to remember to do it before you put all your stuff together, because if you already have your decoration on your lid, then it doesn't work. So there, my handle is on there. Now it looks a little crooked, but that's just too late because it's already put together. So I'm going to glue this on. Center it on here. Oops, I want it to be straight too. That's the lid, and then for the front of the box, I die cut. This is a Spellbinders die that has these little fun things in it, and this is a scallop die. And I'm going to put another one of the one of these butterflies on that I used on my project for Samantha. For uh, in my VR, you will see. I don't. Well, it's after this. You'll see it that I used this on my pennant. For Samantha. And then I have my little feet. And then one thing I forgot, I have five feet because um, I had all this sitting on my desk yesterday and my husband was outside working and the dog went nuts and jumped on my desk. And this box, everything in it flew. And one of the feet was missing temporarily so I had to find it. I 
am going to put this ribbon around the box before I put that decoration on there. So for that, I'm going to use this tape again. Was tape wide and too wide? Nope, it's the exact same width as my ribbon. So through the middle. Usually I measure when I do this and I didn't, so hopefully it's gonna meet when I get back to the middle the front. Oh that was pretty good. That was an accident. Okay. I want to cut this straight and actually it doesn't have to exactly meet in the middle. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect in the middle because This is going to be on top of it. So, I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to keep going around. This ribbon is... Magenta Madness ribbon, but uh, which was an in color that retired, right? Oh no, it's current in color, but the ribbon itself retired, and they have different ones now. But I like the way it matches this, so I ordered when I knew it was retiring because I love this ribbon. I ordered a couple spools of it while I could still get it. This is my front. I'm going to put this on here using glue. Going between all of the little doodads because I want it to stick well. And I layered three. I die cut this circle out three times and layered it together and that makes it thicker and it also makes it stiff. Hold that for a second. My glue to grab. Then to attach this, I'm going to use my fabric tack. I love this butterfly. It is so pretty. I need to. If I don't do this, then I won't be able to use this glue later. I'm done with that glue. And I'm going to put fabric tack on the. center of the butterfly. This stuff smells kind of funky. Interesting thing, I was at my sister's the other day and forgot to take it with me when I was making my project for Samantha. She has the exact same bottle. To me, this, this one I have just smells like glue. Hers smells like something nasty. I did not like it at all. That's going to hold that on. And I'm going to try my lid. It does fit. That's cool. It goes down a little snug, but that's good. I prefer it to be a little snug rather than um, too loose. And then to put on the feet, you can use E6000, or I use 
uh, this distress collage medium. I was watching one of Tim Holtz's videos months ago, and he was talking about this stuff, and he said you can stick anything to anything with this. That it will hold, it will glue any surfaces together. So I started using it then for this because I like the way it works. These feet came from Amazon or Wish. I don't know which one. I've had them for a long time. Let's see, this goes like this. I have, <clears throat> there was one kind of feet that I got that I really like. That I don't know where I got it. It's taller and it just looks cool. And I've never been able to find it again. I can only find these short, squat, little, funny-looking ones, but they work. They, they serve the purpose. It's not all about the feet. The feet are just an added bonus. I think they add to it. You could, um, if you can't find these feet, or if you don't want to invest in these feet, you could put half back pearls on here if you got a good size of them um, flat back flat back pearls is that what they're called flat they're half circles you could put uh, beads on there because you could glue a bead on there and as long as you have four it doesn't matter that it's round on the bottom so there's lots of different ways you could do feet I like the feet way to do the feet, but I have done the other ways also. Should have brought a paper towel with me to. This also dries clear, so that's going to stand up like that. That's going to go like that. And that is my tutorial for this decorative box. So let me know what you think. Um, also, let me know if there are other things you would like to see tutorials on. I'm kind of, I've kind of like run out of ideas. Or if there's something you would like a box for, a particular size box or a particular style of box. This one's easy. It's just a square box. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's... Anything else you'd like to see a tutorial for? Um, I did do a mini album for Joy of Purple collab, and I'll be doing a video tutorial on that sometime in the next couple of weeks on how to make that album. It was a trifold mini album. There's the inside. I think this is a very pretty little box. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.